Well, hello everybody out there in internet land. This is Chris from MajorLegacy.com with another exciting episode of Tober's Log. And we are a week late on this announcement. It was, this was supposed to be announced last week, but we finally have it. One week late uh, to the day. <laughs> the announcement was supposed to be announced. Uh, my last video, I gave you guys a little bit of a hint at what this, was, uh, what this could be. It was uh, moist. Uh, and of course, the announcement for today is Depths of Fear. Uh, forgive me, I have a very limited amount of time in order to shoot and edit this video, so I'm rushing through it a little bit. Uh, but Depths of Fear is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to take place in a underwater mining uh, facility uh, where there are these creatures called mouth brooders and they have these parasitic eggs that they spit at, uh, at victims and some of the victims get, uh, uh, get infected and we're sort of uh, running around this underwater mining uh, facility thing uh, trying to escape both the uh, infected miners, the mouth brooders, which are the creatures, uh, and also the, uh, the mining facility has a uh, self-destruct sequence which has been initiated and we have to try to escape uh, before, the, uh, before the place go boom. Uh, so, so there's that. Um, heard about this uh, pretty early on. This was, uh, this was one of those uh, very early, early things that I heard about through the grapevine. I wasn't exactly sure how they were going to do it. Uh, 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 you know, as more details came out over the course of the, la of the last couple months, uh, you know, it was like, okay, so we're, we're throwing a little alien in there, we're throwing a little the abyss in there, uh, you know, uh, very steampunk, even though it's not steampunk, but we got a little bit of a, uh, you know, lots of pipes and lots of steam, lots of water. Uh, you got these creatures called the mouth brooders, which when I first heard that name, when I first heard the term mouth brooders, the first thing that popped into my head uh, were the scolders uh, from the uh, from the spawning from a couple years ago, the little... Uh, the, the, the creatures that roam around the, uh, the Cary, Ohio water treatment plant. Uh, for some reason, you know, putting the water and the pipes and the steam and all that stuff together, uh, that's kind of the vibe that I, that I, that I got. Uh, but it's, it's a lot more the abyss. Um, I mean, that's, that's the first thing that really pops in my head. It's like, okay, underwater mining facility. Of course, the abyss, uh, the, the abyss dealt with uh, extraterrestrials, underwater extraterrestrials. Uh, uh, it sort of sounds like they're extraterrestrials in this, but uh, I, I, that's where sort of the alien aspect comes into play. You've got the parasitic eggs, of course, uh, you know, just like an alien, the little, um, uh, the alien uh, fetus thingy, you know, uh, the, the, the mouth huggers, uh, you know, latch on to the person and they, of course, impregnate the person and outbursts uh, the alien. Uh, in this case, they're just the, the, the eggs, I guess, just spew, um, you know, when, they, when they're fired at the person, they become infected uh, and become monsters or mutants, I guess, uh, would, would, be the, uh, would be the correct term. Sounds interesting, but it's, it sounds a lot more to me like the abyss than anything else. Uh, you know, the aliens, uh, the alien aspect really comes in with the eggs um, and also the self-destruct sequence, which, of course, uh, is a huge sequence uh, in the first alien film. So, uh, you know, so that, that comes into play. It's a very interesting concept. We really haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, well, I'm, uh, Saws and Steam uh, kind of had an underwater vibe that kind of had a steampunk underwater vibe. There were underwater elements to it, but I think it was more the steampunk vibe that came across in Saws and Steam uh, into the machine. Uh, this one it fully takes place underwater. So uh, how they're gonna pull it off, uh, I'm really interested to see what they do there. For a little bit about what this thing already looks like and uh, has me a little bit excited for it already um, but uh, I'm really excited to see where you know how they pull off some of these underwater elements if I was a betting man uh, this is this is gonna go into one of the uh, sprung tents uh, you know so take that with what you will <laughs> uh, but if I was a betting man it's gonna go in one of the sprung tents um, it's going to be interesting to see how they pull off the whole underwater vibe. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming uh, that we'll get some, you know, uh, different uh, uh, types of, uh, um, you know, uh, different types of effects to pull off that that whole underwater thing. I mean, we saw a little bit of the underwater with the mermaids and the and the uh, uh, scary tales last year. We saw a little bit of the underwater thing in Freddy vs. Jason when we were underneath the lake. Uh, you know, Saws and Steam had some underwater elements. So it'll be really interesting to see how far they, you know, how far that whole idea, that concept has come uh, in the course of Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, you know, to see how they really pull it off. I'd expect to get wet in this house. Uh, it would not surprise me if we do get wet in some way, shape, or form in here. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, so that's that. Really excited for this house. Not my top house. So let's update the, uh, um, uh, the hype list as it were. 
So here we are, number one, of course, we have Universal Classic Monsters. Number two, we have uh, Nightingale's Blood Prey, or excuse me, Blood Pit. Blood Prey was the first house. <laughs> um, and then number three, we have Stranger Things. So here's the updated list. Number one, we have Universal Classic Monsters. Uh, number two, we have Depths of Fear. I'm putting Depths of Fear at number two for now. Nightingale's Blood Pit moves down to number three. And Stranger Things moves down, continues to fall on the list to number four. Who knows, there might be something coming up a little bit later that uh, I am looking forward to less than Stranger Things. <laughs> so there's that. Well, anyway, guys, uh, that's it. So we have our, our uh, fourth house announcement. Uh, like I said, was late. This was supposed to be announced last week, but it got delayed uh, because of other reasons. Uh, you know, Universal has a whole horde of other things that are being announced this summer. Uh, of course, we've got Hagrid's. We had the Today Show Cafe last week. Uh, there might be one or two little things uh, sprinkled in there for good measure over the course of Halloween Horror Nights announcement season that could or could not affect announcements moving forward. Uh, you know, uh, things have already kind of got a little bit wacky because a few things were already delayed. So, uh, so yeah, so, so that's it. Uh, that, that's it for this week. Uh, Tover's Log, forgive me. Like I said, I have to go to work, so I'm rushing through this a little bit. But nevertheless, we have our house announcement, and I am very, very excited, uh, you know, for this. So, so yeah, so that is it for me, guys, and I will talk to you maybe this Sunday. I'm a little busy this, uh, this weekend, so I might not get a chance to do a Topher's Log this weekend, so we'll see. Uh, but uh, if not, uh, then I will talk to you on the next announcement, uh, if that comes before uh, another regular scheduled Topher's Log. So, uh, so, yeah, so that's it for me, guys, and I will talk to you guys soon.